From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marlson, and this is The Leader. All passengers, including those visiting countries exempt from self-isolation requirements, are reminded to complete the government's passenger locator form before entering the UK. Spain has opened itself up to tourists from the UK, welcoming people in without a coronavirus test, even though the British government says you shouldn't go. The country is still on Westminster's amber list, which means only essential travel is advised, but it's not illegal to go there. You will need to take a COVID test when you get back and quarantine for 10 days. The Evening Standard's Jonathan Prynne is with me. Jonathan, so people can go to Spain, but are they? They are. The latest numbers that uh, we've seen this morning suggest that the number of flights heading from English airports to Spanish airports is increasing dramatically as demand starts to recover because demand has been flatlining for over a year. People haven't been able to leave the country for much of that period. Um, but the figures we've seen from from data analysts this morning show that the number of flights heading to Spain has gone up from 181 in the first half of the month to 969 scheduled in the second half of the month. So it's a a huge increase, and that will only be in response to uh, demand from passengers. Now, for all we know, Jonathan, all of these people do have essential reasons to be going to Spain, which is still on the amber list. But it does suggest there are some people out there who are so desperate for a holiday that they'll take the risk. I, I I think there's a lot in that category. I mean, especially given the absolutely gruesome weather what we've been having throughout the spring, which uh, has made people, I think, more probably more desperate than ever for a bit of Costa or Balearic uh, sunshine, um, which they've been deprived of for, you know, effectively two two summers now. Um, uh, yeah, of course, there's going to be thousands and thousands of people who will just say. You know, I'm going on holiday and that's it. It's legal. The government has said it's legal. Obviously, they, they're they saying people shouldn't go except for essential reasons. But it's legal. You can get insurance for it now. Um, and people are going. And yeah, that's something we need to make clear, isn't it? It's not legal to travel to an ambulance country. It's just something that's advised against. It's advised against. The government doesn't want us to go to an ambulance unless it's for a very limited number of, of uh, essential reasons. Uh, and they're pushing that message very, very hard. And of course, it's difficult because when you get home, you still have to do uh, two tests at your own expense um, and uh, quarantine for 10 days five, or you know quick release after five if you if you take an extra test it's all expensive it's unwieldy a lot of people who have to work in their in their workplace can't can't do that or they have to take an extra week's holiday to do it uh, it's not great for schooling uh, you know none of it is makes taking a holiday any easier. But I think for some people, they just feel enough is enough. They they owe it to themselves to have a bit of fun in the sun. Jonathan, do you think the traffic light system can survive if people, as soon as their favourite country hits the amber list, are going to go on holiday there? Well, I think the government will say, um, you know, that each colour, as it were, has a very, very clear defined set of restrictions for people when they when they come home. Uh, which are now being very heavily enforced as well in a way that they weren't last summer. So I think they will they will they will hold the line. You know, the, the a handful of countries are safe and there's no restrictions when you get home. Most countries um, are cases are at such a level that you do need to stay at home for a couple of weeks or ten days when you get back. And then the red country, red list countries effectively. You know, you're, you're, you're all, all but banned from, from travelling from. And I think they all stick to that line. And then it's up for people to, you know, people to make up their own minds and make their choices and, and decide whether they want to take the risk or the extra expense of, of heading to those amber countries. Spain's clearly excited to let people back in. But the country itself, I mean, it's on the amber list for a reason, isn't it? Coronavirus is still there. There are still restrictions in place. If you go on holiday to Spain, is it going to be like a traditional holiday in Spain? It's it's not quite the the full Viva España experience because although lockdown has ended in Spain, uh, there are still quite uh, strict, uh, quite tough restrictions on what you can do. Um, the restaurants and bars are still shut till uh, from eleven o'clock, which 
given that most Spaniards don't normally consider going out till about that sort of time is is probably quite a big sacrifice for for Spaniards. So you won't you know you won't be there till the early hours uh, and and you know in drinking the sangria or whatever. Um, and there are limits on how many people can can be at tables. Limits on how many people can go indoors. Uh, for indoor dining. So, yeah, I mean, it's not Spain as we know and love it, but it's certainly a lot better, I think, you know, a lot of people say, than a caravan in the rain in Rill. And that's the leader. Follow us to make sure you don't miss out on our news, commentary, analysis and features every day at 4pm. We're back tomorrow.